this morning the first job we have is uh, we have a follow-up with the LG washing machine that was off balance so we posted a video the other day on how to put it into diagnostics mode and how to diagnose it today we're actually going to replace the three shock absorbers or the dampener the suspension on the LG washing machine so stay tuned to learn how to repair an LG washer that's off balance and install new shock absorbers. Get out and get it. The first thing to do is get behind the machine and unplug it. There are two gray tabs here holding the top of the machine down. Remove all four screws and the two gray tabs. Remove the top and put it to the side. Remove one screw in the upper left hand corner holding the user interface to the body of the machine. Remove the soap tray by pulling it out and pressing down on the center. Put the soap tray to the side, then remove the other two screws holding the user interface to the body of the machine. Note the plastic tabs along the top here. Separate the UI from the machine. The UI is still connected to the machine by three wire connectors. Remove them. Put the UI to the side. There are six screws along the top and two down here, holding the front panel and door to the body of the machine. We need to remove them. Remove this plastic facade, then there's one more screw we need to get out down here. Remove the spring clamp holding the boot seal to the front panel. Peel the boot seal back and stuff it inside. Remove the six screws here along the top. Tilt the front panel back, exposing the wire harness for the door switch. Disconnect the wire harness, tilt the front panel back, and lift it up off the three pegs along the bottom, then put the front panel to the side. You'll need needle nose pliers and a 12 millimeter deep socket or a half inch deep socket. Fitting the 12 millimeter socket over the pointy end of the peg will depress a tab that holds the peg into the machine. So with the 12 millimeter socket on the pointy end, take your needle nose pliers and pull hard on the opposite end. I had trouble fitting the deep 12 millimeter socket into this space, so I used a half inch wrench instead. After removing both pegs, pull the old shock absorber out of the machine. You can see the part number for the new shock absorber here. Before putting the new shocks in, you want to lube up all your pegs. Make sure everything's in line and stick the peg in the hole.
This might require a lot of force. Don't be shy. Get it in there. Now come around to the left side of the machine and let's remove the shock absorber with the two pegs over here. This is a good angle for you to see the peg. Notice how I use the 12 millimeter socket on the pointy side and apply constant pressure on the other side with the needle nose pliers. On these LG machines is a third shock absorber that we can access from behind. But before we go there, I want to reassemble the front of the machine. When putting the front panel back on, we want to make sure we reconnect the wire harness for the door switch. Remember there were six screws along the top of the front panel? Let's put those back in. Don't forget the one screw that goes behind that plastic facade down below. Put the plastic piece back in, then drive the two screws into the holes. There's a lip on the boot seal that fits snug around the rim that goes all the way around the opening. Make sure that this seal is made perfect all the way around before attempting to put the spring clamp back on. Take the spring clamp and position it in the groove all the way around with the spring aligned at six o'clock on the bottom. I have a special set of pliers for when these spring clamps are really stubborn. They work great, but I couldn't find it in my bucket. So I tried needle nose pliers and that didn't work. So I used this cool trick with a wrench and zip ties that I learned on YouTube on a channel called Ben's Appliance and Junk. Check it out.
Okay, now let's come around the back of the machine to get at this third and final shock absorber. There's four screws holding the back access panel on. Remove them. Remove the back access panel. All three shocks are the same. Remove the two pegs using the 12 millimeter or half inch deep socket and the needle nose pliers. I had some trouble removing the top peg. There just wasn't enough room to back the peg all the way out. So I had to remove four more screws that held a bracket to the machine and the shock absorber. The last peg was a little stubborn, so I used the needle nose pliers with one tooth of the plier on the machine and the other behind the back end of the peg. Secure the access panel back on the machine. Thread the wires from the user interface into the hole on the face of the machine. Then align the plastic tabs on the UI with those in the machine and snap it into place. Then come around back and reconnect the wire harness from the user interface to the wire harness connecting it to the machine control. Don't forget to secure the wires with the two twist ties. There are three screws securing the user interface to the body of the machine. Two here in the front and one in the upper left corner on the back. Put the lid back on top and slide it forward into place. Put the two gray plastic clips back in place then drive the four remaining screws home. Plug the machine back in, slide it into place, then put the soap tray back. To test the machine, I put four heavy towels in on a speed wash. Before installing the new shocks, it would never get past six minutes and go into a high speed spin. Now it went down to four minutes and it went into a high speed Bounce spin. Bounce itself, it got going really good.